So we're still in Q71. Chapter Reish Ayin Aleph of the Alter Bishul Chanorach, Laws of Kiddush. We're holding Halacha 20. I have a feeling we once learned this. I think we once did a paragraph or two here. Is that, does that sound right? Maybe it's just familiar to me <clears throat> from preparing it, but you'll tell me if it rings some bells. <clears throat> because, well, well it, it might anyway, because the next two halachas we're going to learn, which are about one who doesn't have enough wine for Friday night and then Shabbos day and then Abdullah. It all comes from the Gemara and Psachim. Yeah. But I believe we even looked up the Shulchan Aruch at a time. We certainly learned something about it. Anyway, let's see. Misha Einloy, one who does not have Yayin wine, the Kiddush Shalila, for the Kiddush at night, the Shalyoim, and for his daytime Kiddush, Elokois Achas. So there's only one cup available to him. Thank God we live in a time and a place when this is almost never an occurrence. Yeah, thank God we live in a place of plenty. And if you don't have wine, go to your neighbor. He'll give you some wine, not a problem. So it's very rarely an issue where someone um, only has one cup of wine. But when one's traveling, it could happen. If God forbid someone's in the hospital, or let's say someone's in the hospital for a good reason, someone gave birth, and the circumstances are such that uh, you're here for Shabbos, that's it, then you only have one cup of wine. Someone's traveling, there's only one cup of wine, one kosher cup of wine left, or whatever whatever the, story, the circumstances are. So what do you do? You have to prioritize your kiddush. Try to maximize how many uh, kiddush you can make out of one cup. So let's see. If he's going to divide the cup he has into two cups, saving half for Friday night and half for Shabbos day, his cups will not be full. It's a pogum issue. Is well, according to one opinion, the opinion of pogum is it could be if his cup's not full. He hasn't drunk from it yet. We'll get into the pogum issue in a second. Um, but just in general, we learned that the cup is supposed to be full. Is. Now, so far the scenario is where he has two cups of wine. I'm sorry, he has one cup of wine. He has two cups, and he can split them into two, and he'll have a Raviyas in both. But neither of them will be a full cup of wine. And the halacha is, the cup should be full when he makes Kiddush. Now to the next scenario that you're describing. Or even if a cup he has right now isn't full to begin with. So the first cup he's starting out with isn't full. In case one is, he has a full cup, but it divides in two, he'll have a revise in each one, but he's lacking the requirement that the cup be full. Now he's talking about where he has a cup, but the cup to begin with isn't full. So he's definitely not meeting that requirement of having a full cup. But, but if you divide it into two cups, drink part now, part tomorrow, he won't be left with a revise in each cup. So in case one is, he might have a revius in both, but he's lacking the requirement that the cup be full. In case B, the cup is not full, so he's not getting that. But if he splits it, he won't have a revius, which is a minimum per cup. Per cup for, even if you don't have to drink a full revius, you have to drink from a cup that has a revius. To drink the majority of a revius or a cheek full from a revius. But you have to have a revius wine in the cup. So what do you do? So, yanichenu kule bakais achas. He should drink, he should leave it all in one cup, either the full cup or the Revi's cup. Right? The Kaddish al Balayla, make Kiddish holding that cup of wine at nighttime. But he doesn't drink yet. And so that he doesn't render all the wine in his cup. Pogum. Because if he drinks from it now, all the rest of the cup wine is called pogum. So he makes kiddush on it, and before he drinks kish, uh, by If you were to drink now a little bit from it, then the entire cup would become a, become pogum, and therefore, before he drinks yishbach acher, he should pour out a little bit of the contents of the cup that he's holding now before he drinks. 
Kaidim sheet me'ena before he tastes of it. Okay? So he makes Kiddush. This is the scenario where he has two reviases or the one? Either. 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 So either he's holding me a full cup of wine. That's two reviases large. Okay. Or he's holding a not full cup of wine that isn't, that is only a reviase and a half. Or reviews and a third, a two thirds. Right? So he makes Kiddush. But before he drinks, he pours a little bit out. So that way, the wine that's out of the cup is no not pogum when he drinks now. Okay. Now, oh, when that he, wine is not pogum. That's correct. The wine he poured out is, in, is not going to become pogum. When he, he's about to drink from this cup because he's made kiddish. Okay, but he's saving some of the wine from becoming pogum by pouring it out before he drinks. Right. He holds it in his wine during kiddish so that his wine is, so the cup is full during kiddish. But his wine doesn't have to be, his cup does not have to be full when he drinks. It has to be full during kiddish. So before he drinks, after having made kiddish, he pours a little bit out. So that he has some non pug of wine in a cup next door or a cup right next by nearby him. Okay, so right, we learned this, but just to review. Yeah, That's right. The, uh, the cup has to be full before he made Kiddush. During the time when he recites the Kiddush. Yeah. So that's, before. That, when... That's one of the two factors of pug. That's right. right. One of the one of the opinions there, one yeah. One has to be full and one. Yeah. Even if pogum is not related to having your full, there's another. There is a requirement independently that the okay. cup be full. All right. Then. But you are right. There is the opinion which says that this is also related to pogum. Right. Okay. It's just not to confuse. It has to be full and, and not pogum. Not pogum. Correct. So he makes cup kiddush on the full cup, and before he drinks, rendering all of it pogum, he pours a bit out. So now he's saved a little bit in the other cup. It's not pogum. Yeah. Okay. Now when he does so, the hainizer should be careful. That this cup should still have a revius in it. I only pours a little bit. Correct. Because even though he doesn't have to drink a full revius, he has to drink from a revius. So here's the thing. He's got to make Kiddush on a full cup. He doesn't have to drink from a full cup, but he has to drink from a revius. So he makes Kiddush on a full cup, pours a bit out, makes sure there's at least a revius left behind. But even if the cup is half full. Correct. As long as it has a revius. Even if it's half full, as long as it has, it has a revius. Fullness only has to be prior to making That's right. Because yeah. a cup of blessing is no less than a revius, and he has to drink from that amount. Mm -hmm. And then he can go ahead and drink. Right? A cheek full. A cheek full, leaving the rest in his cup. And he takes a little bit of wine he poured out, non pug of wine he poured out earlier in the other cup, and pours it back here. And therefore he corrects the pogum issue of the rest of the cup. Right? We question as we learned in chapter 182, or it's going to be explained in 182, because we learned in 271, but we already learned that. Yeah. And when you pour a bit back in, you render it no longer pogum. One question I have. So the next day, he has a cup of non pogum revius wine, even if the cup isn't full. Even if it's not full, that's another issue then. But at least he at least he has a he has a it is and a revius. He has a revius of non pogum wine. Now we derive from here, I don't know if you remember this, that the best way to give your wife or anyone from your family wine from your kiddish cup is to pour it in a separate cup after you make the blessing before you drink. So that way you're giving your wife non pogum wine. And as we learned here, you still have the value of making kiddish in a full cup. But when you do so, make sure there's still a revius left in your own cup. So you treat uh, that little bit of wine that's coming out, you, you give that to your wife, basically. And that way, the same way he teaches you here to circumvent all the issues of pogum and everything else, by taking wine out before between kiddush and drinking, you could do that for anybody else. Right. And it, it, it's better mm -hmm. to right, also have, they should, all their cups should be full prior to kiddush. You could also have all their cups full prior to a little bit. Yeah. So not to... Or, or even if you have, if they all have cups... Yeah. If they have uh, their own cup of little bit of wine in their cup before you make kiddush, in theory, the kiddush goes to that too, to that wine. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're holding it and listening to the kiddush while you're holding that wine. We learned about that as well. Yeah. Okay, now, parentheses. The in koize ene molagam akshif. Now, the, this was all in the case where he had a full cup, but if he divides it, he'll have two revias, but not a full cup. So he made Kiddush in a full cup, poured a bit out. He still has more than a Revius in his cup. He drinks a bit, pours back, and the next day he has a non-full cup more than a Revius wine. That's the remaining issue. That's right. Now, 
if to begin with, it's not full. So the cup I'm holding out Friday night isn't full. But if I take whatever I have in here and I split it in half, I won't have a full Revius in each cup. You have less than two Revius. I have less than two Revius in my non-full cup for Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. So then... You should pour out a bit before Kiddush. So when you're making Kiddush, your enemy's not having a full cup. So you might as well, to begin with, keep a little bit out before you start making the bracha even. In the first scenario, the only reason why to pour out between Kiddush and drinking is so that when you're making Kiddush, you have a full cup. I thought you don't want to have problem. That's why you're pouring out. But in the case where, to begin with, my cup isn't full. I'm sorry again, lost between the two ideas. Full and... Pogum. And, and, no, full and... Revius. So... This cup is way more than two Revius. So it's it has its Revius, but it doesn't have... Not full not cup. Full. Correct. Okay. It has... And if I divide it in two, I'll have less than Revius each. Right. Okay. Okay? That's the second scenario. That's right. So now, before I even make Kiddush, I'm going to pour a bit in the other cup. And do the same process. Make Kiddush, drink, and then take the little bit left, pour it back in here, so that way I have a VS1 and non pogum for tomorrow. Yeah. Right? There's no re because now there's no reason to pour it out between bracha and drinking. In the previous scenario, the reason why I poured it out between bracha and drinking is so that when I'm making the bracha, I have a full cup, and then I poured it out so it doesn't become pogum. But in this case, I don't have a full cup anyway. Full cup. So, so I might as well so, pour out the bit of non pogum before I even make the bracha. So in, in case two, okay, case one, your second day, you won't have a full cup. By Friday night, I'll have a but full cup. If, but your second scenario is in either case, you won't I'm have I'm neither having a Friday night. That's so, right. So in both cases, at least in, at, at some stage, you're, you're not having a full cup. So in case a... At least Friday night, you're having a full cup. Friday night, but not. And then you, before you make the whole thing pogum, you pour a bit out, save yeah, for tomorrow. That's for but in case B, where your enemy's not having a full cup, not Friday night, not Shabbos day, you might as well just pour a little bit out for Shabbos day before you make the kiddush. Right. And that's it. So it seems like full cup issue is not as critical as the other issues of pogum and reviews. Say again? There's a few issues going on here. There's having a full cup is a requirement. Just having so a reviews. Non pogum. And so it's having a revius. So right. the one you have to sacrifice, it seems to be, is the one that's not a false cup. Well, you're sacrificing seems that because it's the first one to go. Yeah, yeah. It's the first one to go, just technically speaking. Right. I'm not sure you can take you can derive from here the ranking of what's more important, other than the fact that it just so happens to be that the first one to go is going to be have a, is a full cup. you use a smaller cup on your second If you had one, you'd solve the issue, right? But clearly this person's stuck in a scenario where he doesn't have that. Right, okay. No, just for... Um... But yes, in theory, if you had more cups at home, get a smaller cup. Yeah. Okay, so let's read the parentheses then. Sorry? Except for the second case, you don't have a reviews. Yeah, well, there, that's right. For two days, anyway. Right. But if you had a smaller cup, it would but be... But like you said, you, you solved it by... No, you would, because you're only you're only having a, a cheek fall. You're, and that's right. You know, right. Okay. So let's read. That's right. Yeah, yeah no, 100%. Very good. Let's, let's read then. The parentheses again. If this cup that he has from the outset is not full at all, at any time. Now, if he's going to divide that cup into two for now and tomorrow, Friday night and Shabbos day, he won't have a revius in each one. So he has to have a revius in his cup. It's not going to be full, but at least he has to have a revius in his cup when he makes Kiddush Friday night. So before he makes Kiddush, he should pour a bit out before he makes Kiddush. So his Kiddush Friday night is on a cup that's not full, but more than a Revius, with a little bit of wine on a cup next to him. And after he drinks some, he'll take the bit that's left out and pour it back into the cup, thus making it no longer Pogum, and leave that for tomorrow. And now, this is different than the previous case in which he poured out a bit of wine after Kiddush before drinking. He shouldn't do that here. The reason why I did that in the first case is because he wanted to have a full cup when he made Kiddush Friday night. 
In this case, he's anyways not having a full cup Friday night. Therefore, he might as well pour it out before he makes Kiddush. Now, why is it better to pour out before he makes Kiddush rather than after? What's the difference? Just pour it out after Kiddush, before drink. Why Why one, one over the other, right? It explains, Because it's disrespectful to the blessing. Yeah? It's disrespectful to the blessing to pour it out after, pour it out after you drink. Now, what does that do for us when we just suggested you do that for your wife, for your family? So, one second, where's number 116? Where is it? I want to take the time to pop up. Okay. So he says, it's a disrespectful to the bracha as explained in chapter 296. So let's see. And that's where Salat Rebbe states that before reciting the blessing, one should fill the cup of Avdallah overflowing as a simple blessing. He should not pour off the wine before drinking because it's so... Uh, to do so would cast asper aspersion on the cup of Avdallah. Now, I have a hunch that would say that when you're giving it... Um, to one's wife to drink, I don't think it has the same sort of disrespect because it's it's part of the drinking. It's not like you're putting it away to ignore it. That's what I would. But they're talking about not the one you give to your wife. They're talking about the that's right. He says it aside after kidding. That's right? correct. He's saying the reason why you shouldn't pour out after you make after you make a bracha before you drink because it's not respectful to the wine. That's why you're setting it aside because you're putting it away. Like you, like you had it in your cup during the blessing. Now you're just discarding it. Now I'm going to guess that you're giving it to someone to drink. It doesn't have the same sort of disrespect. Mm -hmm. But let's look up quickly. Uh, 296. No, it's 296.5. And then 206.15. We'll do so quickly. It'll come up very quick. You go to the website yeah yeah i'm looking at the about our website okay we're looking at 296 uh what was it what does it say there 296 what it should it should say there in the print in the english side oh, sorry 206 15 29 that's okay so, okay so let's go yeah. 2965 first there's a footnote there as well yeah yeah just it just encapsulates Okay, it is customary that some of the wine from the cup of Abdullah should be spilled on the earth as a sign of abundance, like the cup of the flow. Yeah. For our sages taught that any house in which wine is not spilled like water lacks a sign of blessing. Accordingly, such a sign is blessing, such a sign of blessing is made at the beginning of the week, having to overflow. Doing so does not violate the prohibition against treating beverages respectively by pouring them out wastefully, since our pours out only a small amount. Now, one should carry out the custom of pouring the wine as follows. Now we're talking about Kiddush. Talking about Abdullah. Oh. 296. It's Abdullah. Okay, I'm reading quickly because it's a bit of bigger. One should carry out the custom of pouring out the wine as follows. When filling the cup of to the brim, one should pour out, pour another little bit of wine as some of it will spill on the earth, meaning, or at least the plate under. Or should not, however, one should not, however, pour from the wine used to fill the cup on the earth. Meaning, after, meaning pour from the cup, pour from the bottle into the cup and let it spill over rather than taking the cup and pouring it out. For if one, oh, oh, right. right. Yeah, let it spill over. Right? Exactly. Right. For if one pours from it, the cup will not be filled to capacity as fitting. I mean, if I pick up the cup that's full and I pour it out, now the cup You're is not full. Lose the, uh, the full cup the issue. Full cup. That's right. And if one will, that's right. And if one will not pour anything from it until after the recitation of the dollar, so that the cup will be filled to capacity at the time of the recitation of the blessing. So if he holds it during the blessing and then pours out, it will be, act, it will be an act of disrespect so the blessing of Bari Paragofen. For he recited that blessing on a cup that was filled as is fitting. And after he recited the blessing, before he drank from it, he poured out some to the earth as if it was revolting when he made the blessing over it. He's like oh, disregarding it. it. Therefore, one should pour out the wine only in a manner that described above where you're pouring from the thing. This, right? is, the, this is the proof of why you shouldn't set aside after, after making Kiddush. That's right. Now, I'm suggesting yeah, that when you're giving a little bit to your wife, when you're giving a little bit to your wife, it's not just exactly, exactly the issue of just setting it aside exactly so even though he says here it's preferable to pour in the first case where you have a full cup of wine and you're pouring out after you make the bracha before you drink it's not the best because you're being a little bit disrespectful but at least you're getting the full cup of wine when you make the bracha in the second case if you're not making the full cup anyway better pour out before 
So that way you're not pouring out after you make the bracha and be disrespectful to the bracha. Now I'm saying this issue of being disrespectful to the bracha after you after you after you make a bracha before you drink does not apply to when you're giving to someone, your wife or family, who's going to drink from it. No. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Oh, because the one where you're giving that little bit to your, your wife, you don't need to pour that back in the cup. Exactly. It's being it's drunk not, afterwards. There's no it's not big, issue on that correct. Type scenario. And you're not disregarding it. No, you're not. You're giving it to someone to drink. For sure. So it doesn't have that issue. Okay, what was the other what was the other source? 206, what, 15? 290, uh, 20615. Let's look that up. 20615. Why isn't that here? Something about the means of Oh, it's laws of bracha. It's not laws of Shabbos. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, I'm going too far. Purposeless interruption. That's, that's what I was thinking. Okay, that's the next thing. That's the next issue, which is a purposeless interruption. 20615, right? Yeah. Oh, that's about interruption. Let's about see. The meaning. 14, 15. A person who pours off a little bit of water before drinking out of concern for harmful water should pour the water off before he recites the blessing on afterwards so as not to denigrate the blessing. Interesting. It's not about making interruption, but about a denigration. So there's a halacha like this. It comes from the Gemara where the Gemara talks about uh, pouring out a little bit of wa water before you drink from the water. It's a whole story in the Gemara about water that had uh, negative uh, health issue, health impact on the people. And the Gemara resolves it by saying, before you drink from the water, you should pour out a little bit. Until, until today, this remains the halacha. So pour out a bit of water before you drink from it. It will be a touch. You and do it now before the bracha. So he's saying there in chapter 206 to do so before the bracha. Otherwise, it's disrespectful to the bracha. You're holding a cup of water, you're drinking the bracha, and you pour it out. People do this? Yeah, until today, yeah. I never saw anybody do that. Yeah, my father does it all the time. Like, yeah. Is it is it spiritual health issue or is it, it, it it's a health physical health issue that's the result of no, no, as a, it seems like it's a result of a spiritual impurity, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a story of the Gemara. Okay, so I don't think that applies again when you're not pouring it to the floor, you're pouring it to give someone else a drink. Could it also be that um, you have a leniency here where you're setting aside a little bit of wine because it has a purpose for it, it has a purpose. I mean, oh, which is so because when you're setting it aside, it has a purpose. Salvage and, and be able to use it, have another cup. But that's only worthwhile if when doing so, you gain something in your Kiddush right now, which is I have a full cup when I make Kiddush. And therefore I pour a little bit out after, even though it's somewhat disrespectful to the wine, it's not fully disrespectful because I'm saving it for tomorrow anyway. Yeah. But in this way, I gained Friday night having a full cup. But if I'm not having a full cup anyway Friday night, oh. I might as well pour before so that way I don't have any yeah, of the disrespect. Yeah, that, that was the exactly. So in either That's case, right. you're okay. You have a, have you a, have a solution. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now it gives another reason why you shouldn't pour out between the uh, bracha and the drinking. First was disrespectful to the wine. The second is you shouldn't freely or for no reason, make an interruption between your bracha and your drinking. Right? Yeah. So in the case where I'm doing, I'm, the reason why I'm making that break is because in that way I'm gaining having a full cup. So I'm not freely making an interruption. I'm making an interruption for a purpose. For a purpose of having a full cup when I drink Friday night. And so that you won't have problem the next And that way I don't have problem the next day. So it's not just freely making an interruption. I'm doing so, I'm doing so for a purpose. Then it's okay. And therefore, I would say the same thing is true if I'm giving some to my wife between that. I'm not freely making an interruption. It's part of the kiddish process that I'm giving my family to drink some for my cup. But in the case over here, where anyway, because I'm anyways not having a full cup, even if I didn't pour out before kiddish, since I'm anyways not having a full cup, I'm gaining nothing by pouring between my bracha and my drinking, therefore A, it's disrespectful to the wine, and B, it's an interruption. And therefore it doesn't apply when you're gaining, either you're gaining as in case one, you're gaining a full cup right night, or as I'm suggesting, you're gaining that your wife can drink from a non pug of wine from your Kiddush. Okay. That's right. If you could be, that's right. If you could do it before, do it before. Okay. If there's a reason why you're not doing it before, you're gonna have a full cup, and do after before you drink. And that way, some of the wine that goes out is not pugum. <laughs> and you have gained 
that you're holding a full cup of wine during it's Kiddush. An interruption, but, it, uh, it has a... sure. but interruptions are relative, right? In other words, you're allowed, for example, you're allowed to, we talked about this before, when you walk, from when you wash till you eat, you're not allowed to make an interruption. When you wash till you bread. But saying pass the salt, please, is not an interruption. That's right. part of the eating process. The it's correct here. So, so too here, when you have something to be gained, by pouring out, it's not an interruption or disrespectful. It's part of the process of beautifying, of making your kiddush in the best pace, the best way possible. Right. It, has, it has sort of like a, a connection. It's correct. It has a connection to the process of your kiddush. Kind if it doesn't, way. then it's disrespectful and you're making an interruption for no reason. But if you have a par purpose here, it's, it's not like a... keeping focus on the wine. That's know, right. We looked, that's right. When so you make... that you don't have to make the... That's right. The that's right. That's right. Connect. Okay, let's conclude this halacha. So there, we had two cases so far. Full cup, but if he divides it, he'll have two revias, but not full cup. Case A. Case B, he doesn't have a full cup to begin with, but if he divides it, no revias. Now case three. All he has is an exactly a revias of wine. Now this wine isn't diluted. So it's pure wine. He can add water still. Oh, so he can. He can make more he can than still he can turn it into more than reviews because it's not diluted yet. It's no water been added yet. Right? Now, oh yeah, filu yes sir, yes sir, mashu. Or what if he has a little bit more than reviews? He can drink directly from it because he can just add water. Let, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, filu yes sir, mashu. Elosh enloy kishnei doiv reviews morvach. He has a little bit more than reviews. But not too full of reviews in. He's got a reviews and a half. He can't split. Therefore, if when he drinks at night, his Friday night Kiddush, he's going to be missing way too much for the next day Shabbos Kiddush. So what does he do? He's again on the Machar Bamayim. He will dilute or blend his wine the next day with some water. Yeah. So that it comes restored to a reviews wine. I don't think we could do that nowadays. No. Certainly not too much because our wine is already blended. So I'm looking in footnote 119. I don't know if alcohol percent was. Either. What? I don't, I'm not, I don't know what, what the concentration is. That's right. That's what he says here. Ooh. And this is only, he can only do this. It should be the kind of drink that's appropriate with this blend. The Indian To such a degree that it still retains its status of as explained in chapter 2. Oh, four. Beyond the scope of our discussion today, but chapter 204 discusses the laws of blending wine with other drinks, which um, I recommend. I see people like to make Kiddush. They want to increase the alcohol level of their wine and they'll pour some vodka into it. Very nice, but you got to be careful that you're not ruining the Haggafen status of your wine. And to go majority wine, I don't necessarily know is enough because your wine to begin with is already diluted. Especially, yeah. Right, because yeah, also, yeah. you're replacing the, the wine essence of the wine. The wine essence has already been replaced. It's already been blended. That's correct. The wine we have is already blended. It's already blended with water. It's already been diluted. And to add more... In essence, if you add anything, you're diluting that wine essence. That's correct. If you add more, you're diluting it even more. So you have to look up chapter 204. Unless you are able to yeah, we can look it up quickly. the water from the wine, right? Distillation or something. Let's we can do this. Yeah, what you, you can do that in the middle of Shabbos. Let's see, it's two or four halacha nine. If you wanted a concentrated wine, um, no, I, it's a hole somewhere in your house that you just concentrate. You could do that. And, uh, like have wine essence and then keep on adding, you know. Reconstitute because you're not losing any of the wine essence, like right. taking out the water. Okay, it's a small halacha here. Let's see, two or four nine. Uh, two or four halacha nine. That's where he tells us to look up, right? So let's read it quickly. When, when wine is mixed with water, even if there is a majority of water, the blessing should still be recited, even though it's majority water, provided that A, the wine remains strong enough that it is still fit to drink, even when so heavily diluted. B, it is common for people to drink it as wine, even when diluted to this extent, which is basically our wine. That would be our wine today. That's right. So, like, what people... When you have alcohol, it's hard to when you, have, when you put hard alcohol, it's hard to imagine. You have to imagine what would look what would that wine look like if you replaced that that vodka with water? And would that constitute wine nowadays? 
That's basically where it is. For for where this is not the case, i.e. one person who would drink it as wine, but most people would not, the person's individual feelings would be considered insignificant to let the approach of people at large. Do people at large consider that wine? Or do people consider that too diluted? If there is if, if there are six parts wine to every part wine, i.e. the six volume parts of the wine to every part what? Water. water. I'm sorry, six parts water to every part wine. I.e., the volume of the water is six times the volume of the wine. The blessing per paragraph should never be recited over it. Okay, that's already already very high. One to six, one to six. Yeah, but we don't know what one to six is because again, our wines are already diluted. Right? Even that's if it's 12, 12%. But 12% alcohol no. doesn't necessarily mean 12% water. No, no, no. Right? Even if it has a taste of wine, even if it has a taste of wine, the presence of the wine is not considered significant at all when diluted to the extent the water is six times the amount of wine. Some commonly produced wine have water added during the manufacturing process. I'm reading from the footnote. This obviously limits the por uh, proportion of water that one, would, the one who desires to partake of the wine may add. Many wines, however, are produced without adding water. It's hard to know exactly. Many wines are produced with, without, without adding water, water? Apparently. How do they dilute wine? Today? They add water. But I thought you said most wines. You said most wine. That's they put in the footnote here. Some commercially produced wines have 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 water added during the manufacturing process. I think most. The ob uh, this obviously limits the proportion of water that one who desires to partake of the wine may add. Mm -hmm. But many wines, however, are produced without adding water. Many. So you have to know exactly. Anyway. Okay, wonderful day, everybody. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know enough at all. Yeah, but the bottom line is it's not enough to just rely on the fact that it tastes like wine. No. It's not enough. It's not like that. It's not enough. Really, the question is, if you were to replace that amount of vodka with water, would that be con commonly referred to as drinkable wine? I don't think so, because we're not talking about the alcohol content. We're not at all. Wine acid. Correct. Why so about the will be lost either way they had water or alcohol. That's correct. The, the only reason why the alcohol content matters is because in the old days where the wine is so strong, let's say you have a wine that's 23, 24%, or it's, it's, it's closer to a port, right? And you added a lot of water, less than six times the ratio, It'd right? Less alcohol per cup. But and then, least, and at that point, sense. people would still drink it as wine. They would drink it as a light wine because you turn the port into a light wine but if our wine is to begin with is so light in other words, the alcohol content could become relevant when you're talking about do you drink it as wine but mm -hmm. our wines which are like you know let's say the wines downstairs that are five six percent the rashi wine for sure you add a little bit of water to that i don't know how many people consider that wine anymore so so it's hard to is, know is it concentration of alcohol that determines it's the not price, it's, or is it the taste it's it's or is it maybe a combination of both? combination of all of them would people generally consider that wine that dilution that, that, that standard is very broad it's very broad standard <laughs> and when you have sweet light it's, wine it's also lean standard because if this guy says yes he says no, no he says so even if individual if one individual says yes i do drink this as wine if the majority don't his oh, his his, the, his opinion has become majority. it's a majority so I, I would imagine that the, especially the rashi the sweet light wine we dilute it a bit and we drink who's considering a wine now and it's gone yeah. right okay Wonderful day, Eden. Right. That's right. And so, how do you how do you get a five percent wine? It has to be water. Yeah, there's tons of water in that right. wine already. So I would think that um, you you can probably go down to. And if you add a bit more, if you wanted to be safe, you could pick your twelve percent wine and add water. To Make sure it doesn't go below, like, let's say, 6%. Something like that. But then you're running into the issue of having six times the amount of water to the wine essence. Especially with, yeah, the, with the Rashi wine, which is totally diluted. You add more water, you could really be diluting it too much. Be very careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did that one piece that I added. Grape. I didn't add water. Adding grape juice to something else. That's fine. No, that's because you're not losing. Because you're not losing the, the wine. That's right. I added, I think I did like 50-50 blends. So adding grape juice is not. Is, is, blends. Adding grape juice is, is essentially like adding two cups of wine together. So that people won't get smashed on each one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.